Okay, apparently I ran out of storage when I was filming. So uh, I had added this, these three numbers to get the sample size of 252. And then I always double check it by adding these four num these numbers along here, 65, 58, 59, 44, and 26, to make sure that I get 252 there as well. Now finding the expected value for any of these numbers in here, you have to do this formula right here. The observed numbers are the ones that are in the table. The expected values come from doing row, time, row sum times column sum divided by sample size. So it's actually quite a bit of work. We're just going to do like two of them. So we'll do for this cell right here. So for this cell right here, the expected outcome for expected frequency Uh, would be the row sum times the column sum divided by sample size. So for this particular number, our row sum is 110, and then our column sum is 26. And then the sample size is always going to be the same for every cell in this table. It's 252. So to figure our expected frequency, we'd have to take 110 times 26 and then divide that by 252. And we're going to get 11.349. We'll go to three decimal places there. Actually, we'll go to four decimal places, 11.3492. Okay. We'll practice one more before we go on to do an entire problem, just so I'm, I'm sure that we know how to work the expected value. So we'll do this 17 right here. So our expected value will be the row sum, so I follow that over to here, 62, times the column sum, 58, and we divide by the sample size of 252, Sixty-two times 58 divided by 252 is 14.2698. Okay, now when we do an entire problem with this, um, we need to be very organized because we're going to have to find that value for each of our cells. And then to find chi-squared, we're going to be adding up O minus that value squared divided by that value. So I'm going to show you how to make that really organized so you have... Um, as little room of writing as possible, but it's still going to be quite a bit. Okay. Um, this is our contingency table. Our instructions are to identify the claim, uh, H sub 0 and H sub A, determine degrees of freedom, find the critical value, identify rejection region, find the chi-square test statistic, decide whether to reject, and interpret. So we're doing um, all of those steps that I had just given you on there. And here's our problem. The contingency table shows the results of a random sample of children with pain from musculoskeletal injuries treated with acetaminophen, ibuprofen, or codeine. At alpha equals 0 0.10, can you conclude that the treatment is related to the result? So that's the variables that we're looking for to be dependent or independent, the treatment and the result. So those are our two variables, the treatment and the result. So remember that H sub zero is always that the result is independent or that the two variables are independent. So 
our h sub 0 is going to be that the result of significant or slight improvement is independent of the type of treatment. And then h sub a is going to be that the result is dependent on the type of treatment. Now what they're telling us is that the, the claim is going to be that the treatment is related to the result. So our claim is going to be that they are related. So H sub A is our claim. The next thing we're going to do is figure out our little chi-square picture. So our chi-square picture is always going to be a right-tailed test. And remember that um, we need to use alpha of 0 0.10, but then the degrees of freedom is going to be the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So I have two rows minus one times one, two, three columns minus one, so my degrees of freedom will be two. Then I use my chi-square distribution with alpha of 0.10, two degrees of freedom. My critical value is 4.605. And I'm ready to move on to find my chi-squared test statistic. So that's where all of the work comes in on these problems. Because I have to take O minus E squared and divide by E. Um, so what I do my, for myself when I set these um, tables up to figure out my chi-square test statistic is I'm going to rewrite my table and I'm going to um, leave plenty of room for me to do those computations as I go through. So I'm actually going to leave like four lines for each of these boxes here. Okay. So my result is going to be either significant improvement or slight improvement. And like I said, I want to leave about four lines. So up at the top, I'm going to have my treatment types, which are acetaminophen. And ibuprofen. And codeine. And then I'll go ahead and put my data in there. I changed the data from the original problem, so make sure you, that changed. So I have 53, 86, 60, 38, 15, and 37. So those are my observed values that I'm going to use in my formula uh, when I go to figure out chi-square. Those are the values of O. The observed based on the study, when I asked um, the people who use acetaminophen, if they had significant or slight improvement, those are my observed numbers. And the same for ibuprofen and codeine. And then I need to get my expected value. 
Remember that the expected value is the one that requires us to do all that computation from before. It's the row sum times the column sum divided by the sample size. So we need to figure out the row sums, the column sums, and the sample size. So I'm going to add up my rows, 53 plus 86 plus 60 gives me 199. 38 plus 15 plus 37 gives me 90. My sample size down here, when I add 199 plus 90, should give me 289. And then I add my columns here. So I have 53 plus 38 gives me 91. 86 plus 15 is 101, and then 60 plus 37 is 97. When I add those three together, 91 plus 101 plus 97, I also get 289. So my sample size is good. Now when I find my expected value for each of these boxes, I'm going to take the row sum times the column sum divided by sample size. So for this box right here, I'm going to take the row sum of 199 times the column sum of 91, and I'm going to divide that by the sample size of 289. Now what you'll find is that there's kind of a pattern to what's going on. Because in this box, I'm also going to take the row sum of 199, but then I switch to the column sum of 101. So each of these boxes is going to have a row sum of 199. But then this box has a column sum of 101, and this box has a column sum of 97. But all of my boxes are going to be divided by the same sample size of 289. So usually what I'll do is go through and fill in all of these, uh, all of my work, before I do the computation. Because all of these are going to have a row sum of 90. And I know they're all going to be divided by the sample size of 289. And then I can just fill in my column sums, so times 91. This one is times 101. And this one is times 97. And then for my expected value, um, the expected value is going to come from doing all of these computations. So in each, in each box, I'm going to have an expected value that I'm going to get by using my calculator to do that little problem there. So each little box has an observed number and an expected number. So I just go through and take 199 times 91 divided by 289 and I write in all of those numbers. 62.6609 and I just move box to box. 199 times 101 divided by 289. 69.5467 199 times 97 divided by Thirty-one point four five three three, and the last one, ninety times ninety-one divided by two eighty-nine, is twenty-eight point.
0.3391. Now figuring out the value for chi-square is not um, difficult, but it is kind of a pain in the butt. So uh, what we need to do to figure out the value of chi-squared is we need to go through and we are going to take the observed value minus the expected value and square it and then divide by the expected value. So we'll just write all that down for each box. So I'm going to have six of those. So chi squared is going to be, I'm going to add six things. I take the observed 53 minus the expected 62.6609 squared and I divide by the expected. And I'm going to do that six times and then I'm going to add them together. So you can write it sideways across your paper, you can write it up and down, I don't really care. But each time we're going to take the observed minus the expected, square that, divide by the expected, plus move to the next box, observed minus expected, divided by expected, and then I go to my next row, observed minus expected, squared, divided by expected, plus observed minus expected, squared, divided by expected, plus, last box, observed minus expected, squared, divided by expected. Now, none of this should be difficult in your calculator. Um, just kind of take it slow and make sure that you are accurate when you're typing. When you put all that in your calculator and add it all together, you should get that chi-squared is 19.5003. If we look at our rejection region, 19.00, excuse me, 19.5003 is way out here in the rejection region. So we would reject H sub zero. And our claim was H sub A. So since we're rejecting H sub zero and our claim is H sub A, then we would go ahead and support the uh, claim. So we would say that at the 10% level of significance, there is enough evidence to conclude that the result is dependent on the type of treatment. 